Martel Brown back on the floor as we start along with Smart, Cobbins, Jurek, and Nash. So the two players with two fouls apiece for the Cowboys are back out there for Travis Ford. This is Nash now on the ball right now. Knocked away from Jurek and out of bounds by Southwell, but there's a foul called on the outside. I think was it Magruder? And Magruder bumps Smart now. Smart is very good at moving without the ball and creating contact that turns into a foul for the opponent. <laughs> and he did just that. Exactly. <laughs> and Magruder picks up his first personal. You know, somewhere Jack Hartman and Mr. Iber are watching this ball game, and I think they like the defense. Yeah, they like the 53 <laughs> points in the first half. Huh? Uh -huh. We might not. We'll get back to them on that. <laughs> Cobbins in the lane. Knocked away. Southwell with good defense. Rodriguez. Alley -oop. And Magruder finishes. Took Angel a little bit to locate him, but once he did, Lofted it right over to Defender. Smart wheels in. Loose ball on the floor, picked up. Now, Holly, what did Travis Ford have to say about his team? Well, he said, you know, Kansas State is the most physical team in the league, and we didn't even get in the bonus. Obviously, we're not doing something right if the officials aren't putting us on the free throw line. He's got a good point. They only shot six free throws in that first half, which was very physical, but he likes how they overcame the adversity of three guys not scoring. Oh, Magruder has taken over the game here on the last couple of trips. Big time. That's his game. Talk about him. He's as good a scorer around the rim for his size as anybody in this league. First the lob. Let's see it. You see Rodriguez locates. And then this one's all on his own. Effort. Watch him get to the rim. Nash has got two. He's got to be careful. Welcome you back to the Sprint Center. The Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. Kansas awaits the winner of this game and right now the Wildcats lead the Cowboys 32 23 pressure in that backcourt Nash picks it up Rodriguez all over and then here comes smart dribble through ball loose on the floor how about that by the Wildcats yep. forcing that turnover yep and there is smart doing just exactly what you said well, he gave it he's so competitive that there's times where he loses his cool that competitiveness for a coach or a player on his team is mostly positive. Good example right there. We gotta watch him now. Or he's gotta watch himself because he's gotten into foul trouble in situations like this this year. Out of frustration? Out of frustration because he's such a winner. Well, Billy Donovan and Mark Few told me this summer after he represented the United States in the 18 and unders, most competitive guy they've each ever coached. Ian Southwell with a little in-game conversation. Mm -hmm. Chatter. <laughs> little chatter. And Magruder, meanwhile, has really turned it on offensively here in the second half. Three consecutive field goals for him, 13 points for the game. And Magruder never changes his expression. And we mentioned it, Brent. Markel Brown's got to get going, too. Oh, yeah, he's scoreless in this game. He sat out most of the first half. Smart forced the issue, got the rebound back. And now, yep. Spradling and Smart <laughs> go down, and here we go. I'm telling you, I've seen this. Now, first of all, he makes a great drive. See, this is good. And I'll tell you, this is good. I'm going to tell you something. Joe DeRosa jumped right on Smart. Yep. I mean, even though he said, this is on you, this one. Yes. Now, you'll love his energy. But Joe DeRose's referee, Kobe's referee, Kevin Garnett, he, to you name him, he's reffed him. Now watch, watch the effort by Smart. He's going to get fouled by Spraddling. Now watch, he's going to fall down. Oh yeah. And then throw his arm up Absolutely. after he knocks the youngster down. Yeah. I mean, Joe DeRose has been in there when Shaquille O'Neal is. No, exactly. Pulled out half the building. I mean, it's yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, and, and, and Travis Ford knows that too. And Travis is still over there, barking a little bit. Now, let's be clear now. Marcus Smart is as competitive as any guy in college basketball. You love that about him, but he's got to keep his cool. Knocks the free throws down, makes us a 34-25 game. 
There's a little in-game action going on here. <laughs> and they, they might have stirred the beehive up a little bit. We'll find out. McGruder under pressure knocks another one down. Four field goals in a row, and he's coming to the free throw line. What a career this guy has had. Out of Washington, D.C. Came here with Frank Martin and Devontae Hill, the assistant coach. Looked to me like Weber was trying to calm Rodriguez down. Holly, Holly, what do the uh, Wildcat players think about Smart, by the way? Well, you know, some of this chippiness that we're seeing tonight, especially directed at Marcus Smart, began in the last regular season game in Stillwater just in last week. I talked to Angel Rodriguez, Shane Southwell, who kind of gotten into it a little bit verbally with Marcus Smart during that game. They said, man, he's a flopper. He's a sneaky player. They wouldn't go as far as to call him dirty, but they said he's pretty sneaky with some of the stuff he gets away with, and they don't like it. Play, play of the game in that game with Kansas State having the lead by two late in that game is he baited Rodriguez into a charge call, turned the whole game around. Meanwhile, Magruder is carrying Kansas State here in the second half. He has all their points, and this foul is going to go against K-State. Enriquez. Now take a look now. You're talking about a guy 6'4", 225. Watch him move without the ball right now. This is a good matchup. Good screens, always active. And then he's a freight train coming to the basket. No question about it. Now, I'm going to tell you, Bruce Weber is thinking right now to himself, we don't want to wake this guy up and get him going. He knows what Smart's capable of. Ten-point lead for the Wildcats. 16 for Marcus Smart already in this game. And now a steal. Back to Marcus Smart. Bounce pass. Brown, his first field goal. Great feed. Great feed by Marcus Smart. Brian Williams with the steal. He got it right to the catalyst. Brad Lane, open look, off the iron. And now, Brown with the rebound after the field goal. He puts it on the deck. He charges in. Offensive foul. And that, folks, is number three, a big number in this game. Markel Brown should have got that ball to the weak side. I know he's trying to make something happen, but he forced the issue right here into the heart of that defense. This probably was set pretty good, wasn't it, folks? A little half-court pressure. Remember, we talked about the length of Oklahoma State. Magruder, not this time. Cowboys were ready. Williams, and he is fouled. He'll come to the free throw line. Brian Williams out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It's a young man that really came into his own his sophomore year. But, bro, you see the tape on the left wrist? Travis Ford told me in October we think we, we're not going to get him back. He can't redshirt because he's already redshirted once. He joined the team early February. Huge lift. That's the third foul on Spradley in this game. So he will check out. And Irving replaces him. But Spradlin drawing that third foul on Markel Brown, who wind up being a very big play in this game. We'll see how that unfolds. Murphy coming back in with Gardner for the Cowboys. And Smart's going to take a breather. Yeah, this should be quick because of the TV timeout coming up in 36 seconds. Oklahoma State pulls to within six. And we'll stay with that pressure. Weber wants some motion. Brown's got to be careful chasing Magruder. Four on the shot. Southwell set, knocks down a three ball. Wide open after the motion. That's the patience of Angel Rodriguez and why he's improved as a point guard. Boosts the margin back to nine. William 
Williams on the fade. Tap, no. Magruder comes out with Rodriguez on his right, goes to him. Southwell spots right side, not that time. Marco Brown looking for daylight. Murphy. Enriquez clears it. It's not a shot. Murphy takes much, Brent. Smart will be checking back in soon along with Cobbins. 15 minute mark here. They like this team does not beat themselves. They are a low turnover team this year under Bruce Weber. Texas coach Rick Barnes was very complimentary of this yeah. team after the loss last night. Southwell. It was an adjustment. Gardner. And turns it over. Uh, a bad bounce pass. A nine point Kansas State lead here. Kansas Jayhawks await the winner. Southwell with a good spot on that three, and we're going to be right back after this message from your friends at Phillips 66. That's Kansas State, who tied Kansas for the regular season championship, lead the Cowboys 40 31. By the way, Holly Rowe, where is the Big 12 regular season trophy? Well, it was quite a journey. Kansas State was playing at season the Big 12 League office brought the trophy so if the Wildcats won they would receive the trophy on the spot well they lost that game so Kansas State flew back and their administrators were driving home when they got the call that Kansas was down maybe the trophy would be theirs after all but they were already in Blackwell Oklahoma they didn't want to turn around and drive and go pick up the trophy that they left with a trusted person in Stillwater so they called a the guy Bernie Haney he was at Eskimo Joe's having something to eat and they said, hey, could you go pick up the trophy and drive it back to Manhattan? Sure enough, he came in handy. Rodney Magruder was the first to hold it. He said, I smiled for about five minutes. Haven't stopped smiling since. Holly, having something to eat at Eskimo Joe's? A likely story. 40, 30. Cheese fries. <laughs> <laughs> Hope they didn't get cheese fries on the uh, trophy. Let's see. Washing it down with milk, no doubt. Of course. Why would I have thought otherwise, folks? 14 10 left here. Kansas State leading Oklahoma State. Tough Wildcat defense. Here's Nash double on him. Kick it back other side. Williams comes in on the attack, and as Nash goes up the rebound, he's fouled, no shot. Now that's the guy that needs to get engaged right now with Brian Nash, who carried this team last night. Good pass out of the double team, and then a good job on the offensive glass. Lawrence up and got him, and it doesn't take long for Magruder to check back in this game and replace Lawrence right now. Good ball faced by Smart. Feeds Cobbins and swish. Good execution. Oklahoma State screens as well as anybody in the Big 12. A high execution team. He just joined us. Cobbins injured his shoulder in the first half. And came back in the game, and that's his first field goal of this semifinal. And pulls the Cowboys to within seven. Magruder, air balls it, Nash. Lost control, picked up by Irving, he's got Magruder on his left. Irving's gonna go, kick back out, Rodriguez, spot three, yes. I'm gonna tell you, Martavius Irving has been such a tremendous role player. Great defense, makes threes, great vision that time. Here's Nash, bumping on Gibson, good help. Double team, great help defense, so smart. Air balls a three.
Take a look. Watch, watch Martavius Irving. He's going to get a piece of the paint. Deep paint. Deep paint. Attacking the rim. Then the kick out after he draws those orange jerseys. Now Gardner is going to come in and put on a little pressure here in the backcourt for Oklahoma State. Margins back up to 10. Kansas State is going to be another very difficult team to play. In. Coming up here in a couple weeks, the NCAA gets started next week. And a foul on the shot by Southwell. Brent, in the game against Gonzaga in Seattle in December, they were discombobulated on offense. They were playing big. They put this guy, Southwell, in the game as a small power forward, and they've taken off since. It's because they're such a good ball handling team, and they have some guys that can make shots like Magruder, you're exactly right. They have bought into Bruce Weber's motion offense. Yeah, it's a different team, the one that uh, Gonzaga handled pretty easily, 68-52. Back in December, Southwell with seven points now, knocks that free throw down. And they build an 11-point lead, and at what point do you think that Oklahoma State is in trouble in this game? Well, you know, it, it's, it's getting to that point because you, it, you don't get easy baskets against this Kansas State defense. You know, they go into their half-court defense right now. And the help defense has been impressive by Kansas State here tonight. Bruder is on smart, smart, forces one, battle for it, Rodriguez will bring it back down for Kansas State. So another good defensive effort. Absolutely, and smart again, trying to get into the body of those defenders, and they're not having it. Whip it to Gibson, great pass by Southwell. What a look. Now that's your power forward making that pass, and in, in effect, it's a four-guard offense. Now Brown will come in, and he'll be on the free throw line. Didn't draw the foul that time. So we're going to take a break. But the Wildcats of Kansas State in control right now, 46-33. State shooting only 27% against this Kansas State defense. And I'll tell you, Coach Bruce Weber's pretty active on that sideline, Frank. He, he sure is. And he uh, what he pre he practices what he preaches. Take a look at this closeout right here by Shane Southwell. You talk about high hands on a defender. Look at Coach Weber. He is into it, making sure that Southwell closes out correctly. And then he'll coach offense as well. Move, move, move. Come on, Roddy, move. Move, move. <laughs> Rodney, move. <laughs> Finally got that motion he wanted. Didn't Absolutely. <laughs> you know, he told us earlier in the year that playing against Indiana all those years, maybe 40 times, or, or though 18 years with Gene Cady, that he decided when he was going to be a head coach, he was going to run Coach Knight's motion offense. And he did it very well. He coached Illinois into a Final Four. That was a team that basically had been recruited by Bill Self before he left for Kansas. So it'd be kind of an interesting matchup tomorrow. Should it be Weber and Self, the last two coaches of the Fighting Illini? Yeah, Bill Self has said that that offense for that Illinois team with Luther Head and Darren Williams was a great offense for guys that really knew how to handle the ball. D. Brown. D. Brown, of course, and the ring leader. Augustine yeah. Powell Playing rounded with. that five out. And they lost that championship to North Carolina, I believe it was. Irving handling the ball now for Kansas State, being very patient, just like they normally are with Weber. Well, they sure are. Low turnover team, as I said, about 11 a game in conference. A lot of time to try to find the open man. It's the receivers cutting and moving. Three on the shot. Irving. Rebound Oklahoma State, and here comes Brown. Williams slows him down just a little bit. And now they go to the half-court offense against the Wildcats. Now it's not easy. Both of these teams played last night. Both teams move a lot on offense. Look at that help defense. Rodriguez reached back. They have to come back outside. They miss Rodriguez rebound. The help defense by Kansas State is as good as you're going to see in a college game. Well, it starts with Rodriguez. He is a pest. And pretty pesky on offense. Got inbounds. Saved at that time. Got it back into the hands of Irving. Oh, they have him again. This 
Magruder. Flashes a three. Oh, how about him? 49-35. 17 points. 19. Let me check that. 19 points for Magruder. Well, he's efficient, and he plays the game at, at an even pace. And Nash is scoreless for this game after his big performance last night against Baylor, and he is fouled. But Gibson fouled him, and uh, Nash made sure the official oh, yeah. saw so hard. Gibson and Nash, they've done this before. Back in Dallas, come out of two very good programs. So Brian Nash had a Lincoln High School school to produce Chris Bosch. This is, I think, the frustration with Nash, Brent, because we've seen him be so brilliant. And it's not that he's not trying to disappear, but sometimes he disappears in games. First point of the night. Williams checks in and Brown. Now Weber is uh, questioning something here at this other end. As the name might suggest, Phillips 66 is the proud sponsor of the Phillips 66 Big 12 Men's Basketball Championship. Both start with Phillips 66 and both stand for performance. Phillips 66, experts in gas since 1927. Well, Frank, great crowds here for the Big 12 Championship in Kansas City. It's uh, always great to be here. You and I had a very special journey this morning. We went over to the Negro Baseball Hall of Fame. And that, if you're ever in the area, or you're even a baseball fan, it is yeah. worth a trip to see that Hall of Fame. It, it sure was. You think you think, of the, you think of the history of the game, the Buck O'Neills and the uh, Cool Papa Bells, right there on, on 18th and Vine, right? There's Satchel Page on the mound, appropriately. Uh, very moving, Brent, and I thought a lot of American history involved. No question. Satchel Page, one of the all-time greats. When you look at some of the jerseys of the former teams, the Homestead Braves, Kansas City Monarch, Jackie Robinson, the year before the Dodgers took him up to Montreal, he played here in Kansas City for the Monarchs, and, and the fellow took us around, and what a great tour we had. Yeah. It reminded us yeah. that Jackie Robinson, and I think you knew this, was an outstanding basketball player, among others, because he played football out of UCLA, and uh, Bob Kendrick, we could not have asked for a better tour. Well, I tell you, he knows his, he knows his history. He doesn't need a history of baseball, the history of the ne Negro Leagues. And it was moving, I can tell you. And there's Jackie's number, number 42. And of course, there will be a movie coming out here. So right. right about the great Jackie Robinson, who, you know, I think many feel, I, I certainly do, that he's the most important athlete of my lifetime. Things, things change dramatically and for the better because Jackie Robinson integrated um, Major League Baseball when he was signed by Branch Rickey and and he was he was the right guy and uh, yeah. did, did such a great job. It was also the right city, you know, coming into Brooklyn. I think that was important. Exactly. Yep. A multi a diverse place. Pretty good basketball in Brooklyn too. Amari Murphy from there. So here's Nash now, Oklahoma State, trying to mount a comeback. And yep. there's Nash doing what he that's what he's capable of. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I know he tries. He's given a better effort this year as a sophomore. He's had some huge games. Gets it back into a 10-point game right now. And the timeout is called by Weber in Kansas State. That's the worst place on the floor you could pick up your dribble right there. The two defend the four defenders, half court, sideline, and the two orange jerseys. I mean, Weber's reminded him of that too. That's <laughs> all <laughs> I would think. So we talk about the Big 12 teams. I think there are five teams, and uh, Joe Lenardi would agree with that. And right now you would see Kansas two, Kansas State four, Oklahoma State five, Iowa State ten and Oklahoma 11 of course that leaves Baylor on the outside looking in and I think I think Joe said they were the second four out now they have they, they moved wow. to the next four now yep so a little bit of a move but boy the Maryland win over Duke and 
changes things completely. It does. You know, Maryland's beaten Duke twice now in the last uh, three weeks, four weeks of the season. We've got a young team, Mark Turgeon, who was in this league, right. has done a very good job there. They've got a potential lottery pick in Alex Len, seven-footer from the Ukraine. I'll tell you about those tall international guys anytime you want, man. <laughs> I get ready to listen to you when the draft comes. Yeah. Right. Tell me who those characters are. Ship it into Magruder. Beautiful pass. Yeah. Quick turn by Magruder. Great execution right there. They baited. He thought they thought it was coming off the screen. He just posted up. 21 point game. Nash again. Tap back. No. Snatch. Enriquez. Tell you what, Jordan Henriquez is doing his best with that bad back. He got yeah, the shot today. Like yeah. Good effort. We haven't seen DJ Johnson very much. Southwell thought about it. And instead, it'll be Rodriguez. Got another three. Yep. Southwell gave up the contested shot, took one dribble, created space for Rodriguez. That's excellent execution. Now we're down to the eight minute mark. And foul is going to go against Kansas State. So we're going to take a break here at inside eight, where Kansas State leading at 54 39. Right back after this message from your friends at Phillips 66. It's been a record crowd here today. And of course, uh, we want to thank a couple of fellows who worked all year on the Big 12 Network, and they've done a great job with some of the games here. Dave Armstrong and Reed Geddes. Uh, they did two of the four games yesterday, Fran, and uh, yep. I always enjoy listening to them. And see, one thing you probably don't know about Dave Armstrong, his sister, Claudia, married, lives up in Michigan. She does many of the spotting boards for the football announcers at ESPN and around the country. And it was Dave Armstrong who suggested, can you put together some kind of a, a computerized spotting chart? And um, Claudia does a great job. With That's that great. Way. And Reed Geddes, if he wasn't such a high-priced Houston attorney, he might have my job. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad he's just moonlighting. I know. And of course, Doug Bell <laughs> and uh, Brendan Mance are helping us here today. And that's a fine work in the studio. Yeah, and a lot of guys work on the Big 12 Network throughout the year as well. well the Judah splits the D, and Enriquez saves it. Now, this is a tough comeback for Oklahoma State because Kansas State will try to grind shot clock, and they still come up with a good shot. Smart foul, Rodriguez. And when you've got number 13, Rodriguez, yes. you can grind clock because he's quick with the dribble, has the ability to pass, and if you slough off to do anything, he's a dangerous shooter, as he's demonstrated here today, too. He's got a dozen points. I think we, we agree he's going to be a star next year in the Big 12. He's no close to it now. Now, you can see how they operate together, and yes. they really have a sense for where their teammates are going to be in this offense now. Yeah, look at Rodriguez going to work here. Lot, a little bit in too far now. Ran some clock. Now it goes over. Oklahoma State really has to make use of every possession here. Left hand by Nash. No, tap away, and here comes Spradley. Was left open. Coach probably would have preferred that he run some clock, and now they will. Grindy. Magruder a little bit short, goes back after. Loose ball, Smart picks it up. That's a physical possession. <laughs> Brown knocks a two down. Okay, now. Here comes the pressure. Exactly. Now for Kansas State, you want to grind clock, but you still have to get good shots. Smart reach. Rodriguez got inside. Scoops in. Left hand. No put back. Enriquez. You know, this is a guy that played his best basketball at the end of last season as they went to the NCAA tournament. So time winding down on the Cowboys here. 
How about Magruder's performance here, Fran? Eight of 13 from the floor. Well, he came into his senior year as a preseason All Big 12 performer. He didn't let anybody down. Finished on the All Big 12 team and does it quietly, Brent. Out of Washington, D.C., four years. He's going to leave Manhattan, Kansas as one of those beloved Wildcats. You put him in the annals with Mitch Richmond and Lon Kruger and Bob Boozer and Roe Blackman, name him. Ronnie Magruder's made a name for himself in the Big 12 and in Manhattan, Kansas. One of those smooth, smooth performers. And they'll miss him next year. He's a well, senior. Yep, they sure will. Yeah, 24, you know, last night. So he's 21 tonight, so he'll certainly make the all-tournament team with a couple of performances. If we take a look at our quick stats, we brought to you uh, Kita ends and sweeps here, Brian. Well, 28%. We, we thought this would be a grinded-out game, two, de two good defensive teams, and certainly Kansas State has done just that. You know, one thing about Kansas State, I just noticed that 16 uh, fast-break points in George Hill, the stats man, so that's a season high for them. That uh, Oklahoma State usually allows down around six, seven. Yep. And they've given up, they've given up 16 fast break points here tonight. In a game where it's hard to score, that's important. Forte, he can score. Knocks down another three ball and uh, plenty of time left. But you see the advantage of having Southwell out, out there as your forward because he handles the ball, takes heat off of the guards. Go back to within 10 now. There's Rodriguez. Open. Oh, that's his spot. He's hit three from that same yeah. spot. Yep. I mean, sooner or later, they're going to try to take that spot away from him. Now he's got the ball back again. He's got Magruder on the right. And a beautiful rejection underneath. Oklahoma State survived that. Now Nash comes up and he slips and travels. Well, that's a bad break for LeBron Nash. He had a head of steam. I'll tell you, Rodriguez just swiped that ball from Marcus Smart. You don't see that happen very often. That has been the battle within the battle tonight. Two guys that have uh, not given an inch. Margin is 13, and now we're inside of that five-minute mark. Irving, who checked back in, handling the ball for Coach Weber. Weber wants some more of that motion. See the difference, Brent, with the fourth small player in Southwell as opposed to Absolutely. Henriquez and Gibson at the same time? That changed their season around. Now, Rodriguez was under a lot of pressure on that shot. That he thought it got deflected. He thought it should be Kansas State basketball that uh, Murphy got a, got a piece of the shot. But he didn't get a lot of help from uh, the three officials. I thought that was good defense overall, anyway. I, I thought so, too. Yeah. I thought, I thought it might have been a little, a little by shot yeah. by him, but he's had a terrific game. Smart off the iron in the Southwell's hand. Now we're going to come down inside of four minutes as a result of that. Look how Southwell just takes the heat off Rodriguez by bringing it up. <laughs> Smart tries to get on Rodriguez. <laughs> well, there's a little contact. Offensive foul is the call. And now Weber is livid at what happened here with Smart. That's what he does. He baits you. <laughs> I want you to take a look at the play and then check coach's reaction yeah. here. Now watch Marcus Smart. Crafty. Sneaky. Watch Gibson. He wraps up Gibson. That's a bad call. That is a bad call. I would think that Coach Weber agrees with you. We'll be right back. 
Well, friend, let's take a look at our sixth man of the game, brought to you by Motel 6. Now, this is a guy that knows his role well. He's become an outstanding defender, made a couple baskets today, a couple of assists. Part of that class at, at Kansas State that's won 100 games of senior class. Now, you give Oklahoma State one last shot. Yes, right? yes. A couple quick baskets. They're going to post them up inside. That's going to count. That's one of them. Yep. And now a couple stops, maybe a little pressure. Oh, there's time. See, I'd almost get... Uh, Hen Henrique is going to have to come off the floor soon. Timeout by Weber. Spradling's going to be checking back in. Uh, if I were C Travis Ford right now, I would foul Jordan Henriquez. Every time he touches the ball, he shoots about 30 uh, in the 30s. But if you were Coach Weber, would you get him off the floor? I think I would. I would. In this situation, I would. Because he's a... And I say this because he's made a great contribution tonight. But he's a turnover waiting to happen if you foul him and put him on the line. So he is going to stay. Spradling checks in. Rodriguez, Southwell, Magruder. And Enriquez goes back. Bradley can still run the baseline. And he does just that. He gets it into Rodriguez's hands. He gets away from Brown. Keeps the clock moving. And uh, finally, the foul is going to be called. Got it down to 327 here, friend. Yeah, but I, th I think they're fouling now to get closer to the bonus because that's the 15 foul. <laughs> Rodriguez steps out. Smart is out on Rodriguez. Spradley now Southwell. Four very good ball handlers and Enriquez down low. Coming out for some screens. With that clock down inside 10, three minutes to go. Kick it back outside, and no way. It was action down on the inside. <laughs> Who was involved? Offensive foul is called, and Smart went down on the play. Rodriguez down on the inside. So because of the offensive foul, ball goes over. Now take a look at this, Fran. Let's see. Now there's the drive. Smart set. Hey, that's good play. And Rodriguez has got to know that. Especially when Smart's in the area because he is good at that. It's a good play. Hey, another basket here. To get it interesting. Smart wants it on Rodriguez. And they're basically wrestling inside. Outside shot Magruder with a huge rebound. Smart on the floor. Back now to Rodriguez. Now it's two and a half minutes. And this is that four guard offense now. They can use clock. They have good ball handling. Got it down inside 10. Rodriguez gets inside. And a foul, I believe it's on Murphy. Take a look at this, Brent. Now, you could get, you, you know what? In, in the state of Kansas, you can get two to five for some of this action in here. <laughs> this is good stuff. That's two guys. That is junkyard dog basketball right there. Both of those guys getting after it. They may not like each other, and they may well like each other, but I know this. They respect each other because they're cut from the same claw. That's a big free throw. Enrique's seven points. Yep. Is that I didn't know. That is always a big free throw. But he makes exactly. One. He's going to make me eat my words, and I don't mind. It is his first free throw <laughs> down tonight. Here he comes, friend. The turning point of their season was a win right in this building against Florida. Look at that. Yep. Huh? He did that against Florida, Billy Donovan, in December, and it was one of those wins that really changed their season around for Kansas State. Two minutes, and now it's desperate time for the Cowboys. Southwell hooked Nashville. Nash 
So the foul's on Southwell. Spradlin's going to be checking back in. State batteries drive of the game. This was a beautiful play. It sure right was. You see Magruder put his high hand up, throw it up high for me. Rodriguez put it right on the money. Nash at the free throw line makes it 11 again. But we're inside of two minutes now. Spradling comes in to run the baseline. Knocked away and a foul called on Smart. So Southwell will be coming up to the other end. Shoot one and one, Fran. So the front end is uh, important. Here. Still important, absolutely. And you see Bruce Weber's going to get Irving back in for defense. Forte comes in for Oklahoma State for offense. Phil Forte's been quiet tonight, Brent, but what a seat, what a freshman year he's had. Indeed. Young man averaging 10 points a game off the bench, one of the best six men in the Big 12. And they, may, they may lose Marcus Smart, but the, the, most of this team is back a year from now. Missed the front end. Rebound by Nash. Big possession for the Cowboys. Three ball, and Nash nails it. Timeout is called. 61-53. Given a life. What a huge shot that was by Nash. You know, we talked about Oklahoma State being really long and lengthy and athletic. Take a look at Nash right here. He's going to bury this shot. The young man from Dallas knocks the shot down. Now, they have the capability of being a good full-court pressure team. So the chess match right now is the four-guard offense for Kansas State. Speed, quickness, and athleticism of Travis Ford's press. Nash has come back from being scoreless in the first half and all 11 of his points. He's a second half performer. Evidently. A lot of high hopes for this young man. I think a lot of people thought he was going to be a one and done, but I think he'll be around at least another year. And, I agree. And he should. He should. He's a, he's a good basketball player. At times he can dominate. Spradling runs that baseline now. Whips it into Rodriguez, hands back to Spradling. Spradling whips it up, great ball movement back there. Magruder now eating seconds up. They're going to have to get a handle on somebody. We've only got a minute and a half here. You don't want to foul Spradling. In the so, 80s, Rodriguez, and he will come to the free throw line. Williams fouled him. You got to pick your poison with Rodriguez and Spradling. Spradling, the second best free throw shooter in the history of Kansas State behind Steve Henson. Pretty good company. Pretty good company. And we got another one on one coming up here. Made the front end. Now he'll shoot for the double digit lead. And checking in is Lawrence. That's been a good battle now. Rodriguez has won the welterweight division tonight. Okay. Well, he knows what the heavyweight. Yeah, well, he's yeah. <laughs> well, light heavyweight. Light heavyweight. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's, in terms of the welterweight division, it's been Rodriguez no tonight. <laughs> It's a 10 point lead. And yeah, for Rodriguez, he's had a very, very solid night here. 126 remaining. Five guard defense now for Kansas State. Nash again, not this time, and look who rebounds. Rodriguez. 17 point scoring night for Rodriguez and a big rebound now Magruder. Coming up to the final minute. And a foul before the shot. So it looks like it's going to be Kansas State and Kansas. And the Jayhawks beat the Wildcats twice during the regular season. Well, the game in Manhattan was a close game, but the game that we did in Lawrence was not. 
And in 2010, they met here. I mean, Frank Martin was coaching the Wildcats, and the Jayhawks won with that game. So they'll get back to the summit tomorrow, it looks like. Still 104 left here for Oklahoma State. It's also going to be fun next week, as we pointed out earlier. Both of these teams are likely to open up their NCAA runs right here, right here in Kansas City. Sprint Center. Be very yeah. surprised if Kansas State's not here. I would agree. 22 for Magruder now. And Nash. Long shot by Brown. Battle for the rebound. Back to Brown. Here's Forte. Catch and shoot. Off to the left. Tap back by Murphy. Here's Brown. Floated in. A 10 point advantage. 44 seconds remaining. Well, you know, the uh, Geico player of the game. Sort of interesting. Ah, uh, you like Rodney Magruder? I think uh, I think I can go with that. I think I can live with that. Been pretty solid tonight. 23 point game for number 22 here tonight. Indeed, he's had a wonderful game. The yeah. Geico player of the game. Can't can't argue with that. Even though Angel Rodriguez has played awfully well 17 points in all four of his free throws but he had six rebounds and that was very impressive <laughs> when you when you take a look at at rodriguez he's only 5 11. yeah san juan puerto rico he dug out some big rebounds in this game. i'm laughing because last year he could have been the geico player of the game for the other team at times you know, you know? and that's what's the beauty of we we watch it every year watch guys the one and done guys are great to watch, but the guys like the Magruders and the Markel Browns, guys that stick around for a while, this guy will be a star next year in the league. He'll be one of the best point guards in the country, I believe. Holly Rowe just said that she's going to interview the big little man after the game. <laughs> Welterweight <Okay. laughs> champ. <laughs> well, his mom came to see him, and remember she was in yeah, town in Manhattan. Absolutely. She'd never seen snow before. Steal by Smart. Nash. Need to pull the trigger quickly. Murphy gets in close. Knocks down the deuce. 65-57. 35 seconds now. Southwell gets it in Magruder's hands. Hooked by Murphy. Coming back to the free throw line. And yeah, Magruder can wind up with a 25-point night if he can make this. Good execution both ways. Oklahoma State, solid pressure, good traps. Kansas State moved the ball and a little thing. Kamari Murphy, good foul. Quick foul, played the ball. No room for an intentional flagrant one right there. <laughs> That's about the biggest expression yeah, we've seen exactly. from the all exactly. season long. <laughs> How about the job Bruce Weber's done? Right. Fine job. You know, Frank Martin, we said many times, left behind a great group of guys. I call it a residue of toughness that he left behind. Guys that know how to work, and this guy has taken it to the next level. Always been a very, very good coach. His yeah. problems in Illinois came about for lack of being able to recruit some of the big players that are coming out of the Chicago area. Yep. Brown. And wrapped up by Irving, our sixth man of this game. And now he is fouled with 20 seconds to go. Kansas State is headed for the championship game. I think everybody realizes that now. So, uh, Holly, a question. Uh, Marcus Smart, do you think he will go to the NBA? Is this his last game in the Oklahoma State uniform? You know, a lot of people think that he will. I talked to Travis Ford, his coach, about it, and Travis said he actually just got some paperwork this week that they will submit to Stu Jackson of the NBA for an evaluation. They send it to about half the GMs in the league, and they say it's pretty good. James Anderson did it a few years ago. His projection came back 22 to 28. So he came back to school another year, and when he went, he was a 20th draft pick. So they feel like there's some accuracy to those evaluations. Travis Ford said they'll try to help Marcus make the best decision, but he said, you know, we only lose one guy next year. Marcus is so competitive, I wouldn't be shocked if he wanted to come back and play with these guys. Yeah, let me, let me correct myself. Obviously, the last 
tournament game here in Kansas City. He's going to yeah. move on to the NCAA tournament yes, and play Oklahoma State next week. You know, he's very close with his high school teammate, Phil Forte. It wouldn't shock me, but his stock has risen so quickly throughout the year. And right now, I believe he's in the top ten. No question about his desire. There's no doubt about it. This guy is a winner. I mean, he's playing hard here in the last seconds of this game. Hey, he's the end of the There's an offensive foul on Irving. Remember, Marcus Smart was the player of the year in a pretty good league. Yeah, he fouled Nash. And that's the last thing you want in this situation. Oklahoma State ball out of bounds. They'll try to work for a quick hoop. Forte catch and shoot a high arching three rattled out. Magruder rebounds it. And they turn it back over at the buzzer. It's Kansas State and Kansas for the Big 12 championship. 68-57. Wildcats beat the Cowboys. Smart works his way down the line. There's Rodriguez and Smart. You notice number 42 didn't give him a lot of luck. Yeah. Remember that's who Smart wrapped up? Exactly. Okay. Yep. Two Dallas guys. <laughs> <laughs> 